Twenty four scones left. Turn on your ovens, people. Turn on your ovens. Uh, usual, 180. Uh, oh, we're not that far behind. We're about 20 seconds behind the, on the sound. And now, I better turn on the oven. Um, also, let's turn on. This, 11 o'clock. Okay, all those to plan, we will be eating sausages and rashers at 12, the latest. What else do we need, boys? We've got everything. Uh, sausage, rashers. Eggs, pudding, mushrooms. I think that looks good. Are we good to go? Anybody tuning in? The scones were unreal. Thanks, Ian. Back again. Same jersey. Who you are, Dills, Mike. I saw your Man United jersey. Well, how easy were the scones, Ian? Weren't they simple? And we didn't measure or weigh anything. See? There is method to all my madness. <laughs> do that again? Go over and do that again? No. The scones went down a treat. Nice little starter, lads. That's a starter to the main event now. So instead of soup and roast beef, we've had scones and now we're going to have a fry. Uh, I'm delighted, lads. I don't care. Even if one person said they made the scones, I'm happy with that. Good morning, guys. Shane and I are ready to make a proper breakfast, or so he says. <laughs> don't worry, Marion. I have a nice little shout out coming now in a sec. Um, Scones delish. Thanks for making it so simple. I didn't make it so simple, Monica. Everyone else complicates it. Uh, they always say it only takes an idiot to complicate a situation. Uh, happy Easter, guys, and happy Easter, Julie. Mine came out great in the end. Delighted, Anne. Delighted. Yeah, sometimes, let's say, ovens are different. Sometimes you just gotta, you know, stick with it and it'll eventually sort itself out. I'm wrap. I'm what? I'm warping with the hunger. Uh, Enda Grace is watching. Say hi to Enda, guys. Hi, Enda. And happy Easter to you, buddy. Uh, we got a huge amount of views. That's nearly four and a half thousand views on the scones video already. It's just frightening. Because um, we're only like, we're only bluffing deals, aren't we? We're only chanting around with this kind of stuff. Uh, Marion, I forgot to say, you like that. Tell Shane there, look, lovely. It's not Sunday, it's Friday. Uh, Claude and Hannah, we're delighted uh, to watch scones back. Love Lucy and scones. Yeah, I, te I tell you what, Claude, figure, ask her. And be honest, which are nicer, mine or Lou's? My sister does make very good scones, I have to admit. Uh, okay, Sunday. The scones are delish. I got loads of pictures in of scones already, guys. It's great. So, it's not Sunday, it's Friday. And uh, I want to tell you where I got that from. I want to give a guy a huge shout out. Uh, Shane, who I know is watching, got a lovely story from uh, Shane's mom in a message there the other day and uh, it was a very emotional story, it was lovely and I know Shane slags his mom saying after today he'll have a nice fry. Well, I have a funny feeling Shane, your mom makes a pretty good fry all the same. So a huge shout out to you Shane, love getting the message from your mom. I uh, hope you're doing well today buddy. And also we have a Ben Matheson who is 16 today from County Mayo. And Ben, like so many other people, apparently are watching all the videos that we're doing and having a great crack and enjoying all the fun. And I said, guys, all we're doing here is, it's pretty much, we're just having a laugh. That's all we're doing, you know? And if you want to join in, great. If not, great. Uh, it's just having a bit of fun and hopefully teach you a bit of cooking along the way. So, we are gonna start off with this Rushdie, and I'm giving you all ample warning, this could go horribly wrong, okay? This could go horribly wrong. Every time I do it, you, know, you always have the jitters when I do the big uh, flip, yeah, the big showboat thing. Could go horribly wrong, and if it does well, we'll just, we'll figure it out anyway. So, you need a grater and any kind of a tub, that's the only one I can find, doesn't matter. We're not putting this into the oven, just any kind of a tub that we're gonna grate our spuds into. Turn on your ovens to 180, 
And don't go rushing ahead with me, particularly with the rashers. The rashers are one of the last things you put on. Trust me. So let's start off with our potato rusty for my old compost. Um, and once we get that on the go, then everything flows fairly quickly afterwards. So get a couple of potatoes, maybe a, one big one each per person. And that'll decide the size of your frying pan. I'm using a big one because like everything, I always love to cook more. And that way it's just a quick bang in the microwave, flick it under the grill, it's always quickly reheated. So we're just gonna peel a few spuds. What type of potatoes? Whatever potatoes you have, okay? So don't worry about it. And this is th something different to the hash browns, okay? And one, uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is because you can make loads of little dishes out of this with, say, the little bacon uh, lardons with uh, 101 different things straight away. It's just, it's a great dish to do. Dills, anybody saying anything? Uh, Sharon said, scones are yummy. Can't wait for a happy Easter to you. Thank you very much, Sharon. You too. Happy Easter to all of you guys. And your beautiful family, Paul. Thank you for keeping oh, us. Oh, oh, oh. who is a beautiful family? They haven't, they haven't shown. Sean never shows himself. You haven't seen him. Is he beautiful, Dills? Is your brother beautiful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I don't know if I have a beautiful family, but it's the one I'm stuck with at the moment, I'm afraid. So, I don't know. Now, apparently, for all you religious people out there, they got it wrong in the Bible when they said the Last Supper because I am pretty sure when Jesus rose again on Easter Sunday, he had a fry because there is no way he could have done all he did on an empty stomach. I'm pretty sure he had a fry because of... What are you laughing at? It's a fact. There's no way he could do too much on it. There's no way. What did Napoleon say was in the crossword yesterday? An army marches on? You see? No way Jesus did all that stuff on Sunday on an empty stomach. Guarantee he had a fry. And that's why it's brilliant, because you have this first thing in the morning, you don't need to eat anything until that night, so it's brilliant. And actually, while I'm on the subject of Jesus, and I just express my sincere disappointment with all the TV stations in this country, no Ben-Hur, no Ten Commandments. What? What's the story, lads? Easter Sunday, and you're showing like Shrek 2. Where's Jesus in Shrek 2? Is he there? No, he's not in Shrek 2. What's the other thing? Casablanca. There's no Mary and Joseph in Casablanca, lads. I wanted to sit down and have a good four hour long movie, The Ten Commandments, an absolute classic. I wish you were showing that. Anyway, nobody listens to me. Okay, so hopefully you made the scones earlier on, guys. We made 11. Uh, the, huh? 10. Was it 10? Yeah. Ah, that adds up because we've only four left. I was trying to figure out who robbed the sneaky one. We made 10, thanks, Um And do you know what? We didn't measure a thing. Look back on the video, it's on the page. And a bit of crack, wasn't it, guys? Yeah. A bit of crack. Chocolate chip, we were going to make coconut until we realised we didn't have coconut. So we made chocolate chips instead. Uh, George Hook said, Ben-Hur, legend, happy Easter to my neighbours in Kerry. George Hook, my buddy. I see you. George was on yesterday as well. George is a good pal of mine. We worked with each other in a hotel up in Dublin for four years. So happy Easter back to my neighbours back in Cork. Now, so we're just peeling a few spuds. Nothing major. I said, this is the... One that only takes a little bit of time, the rest of it's fairly flies along. Look, just, everybody can cook a fry, but hopefully what we're doing, there'll be one or two little things. Uh, you know, you might pick up one or two little tips, particularly when it comes to the rashers. Okay, Dill, get rid of our compost. Boom. So we've peeled up five, six potatoes again. No recipe, no measurements. Don't be worrying about any of that. Life is too short to be worrying about these kind of things. Uh, now, so we're just gonna grate them. So it takes a couple of seconds. If anybody's stuck behind, let me know. Anybody comments in there? Hey, you brighten up my day every day. Love your videos. I miss your school. I missed your school video. And can you share any chance? And any chance you share it? Yeah, it's on the page there, Antoinette. Uh, and thanks for me. You brighten up our day for coming on, and telling us that. So yeah, it's on the page. Just scroll down. You'll see the whole cook along live. About 20 minutes of waffle in it while we're waiting for the scones to cook, isn't it? Yeah. But you'll see exactly how to make it uh, and our, our so called recipe. It was simple, again, yeah, and that's what I'm just trying to show you guys. It's just simplicity, that's what all the cooking is all about. It's the same with the shows I have on version. It's just, it's just absolute simplicity. Don't be getting too bogged down about it. It's amazing the amount of people that stress out about cooking. But I don't. Well, like, why? I suppose I'd stress out if I had to, you know, be a mechanic for a day because I wouldn't know what to do, but, well, that one's going in the bin. So the recipe is, pull that up, Dills. Six potatoes minus that little bit. Um, yeah, like, 
I'm just saying because I, I, I don't understand. It's simple. Cooking is simple. But I have been doing it nearly all my life. So, and I have been trained by one of the greatest chefs ever, my father. So, uh, anybody making this rushdie? Let me know, guys. Anybody grating the potatoes? Let me know. I'm very Are you cooking a leg of lamb? Tips for okay, Margot, I'm gonna tell you now. This is very simple. Just go over there now and grab. There's a leg of lamb in the fridge because that's what we're having for dinner tonight. I see Decky Keedy's watching. How are we doing, Decky? Happy Easter, buddy. In the bag. Make sure you don't drop everything else. So I'm going to show you, Margot. Yes is the answer to your question. Are we cooking the leg of lamb? Yes is the answer. Oh, I nearly have enough spuds with this one actually. So there is my standard leg of lamb in, that's our lovely model of showing, just please kindly model, bring it in, can they even see it? They can't even see it, come in, show them, show them the leg of lamb. It's in a bag, but it's a pretty much standard size leg of lamb. And I'm gonna give you the greatest tip in the world for cooking a leg of lamb. Turn on your oven, 180 degrees, get a handful of oil, massage the top of the leg of lamb, and put rock salt and pepper on it. Bang it in the oven, simple as that. Bang it in the oven, back into the fridge hills. Bang it into the oven, and then it's an hour and 45 minutes at 180 degrees for medium rare. If you want it well done, put it in for two and a half hours. And if you want it in between, somewhere between an hour and 45 and two and a half hours. That's how you cook a leg of lamb. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, I have enough potatoes on that. Dills, throw that into the fridge. We'll cover that with water now in a second. And Johnny, we're gonna go over to the sink now. So, here is what we are doing. So now guys, we wanna squeeze out all kids. You get involved in this, Dills. You get your hands, your hands are clean as well. Squeeze out, look at all the water that's coming out of all that, okay? Squeeze, 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 nice and tight. Take up less spuds, Dills, because you can't squeeze it. And now we put that little bit there. You give that to me now. Yeah, you're helping me, so look. See how much more I got out of it? So squeeze, 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 squeeze. This is great crack. You give that to me now. And then squeeze. Can you see that all right on the screen, Shawnee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely, jubbly, jubbly. <laughs> think, of, think of something that you hate, kids, when you squeeze it. And then think about something that you hate more to get the last bit of water out. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze all of it out. Look at that, Dills. Simple. How simple was that? Now, we're going to give... You know, rinsey, pincy, pincy. We'll sort out all that in the sink, sunny a little bit. Wash the hands, Dills, you wash your hands. And then, Shani, stay right there for a second. Ooh. This is the part we don't show my wife. Stick it into a clean tea towel. Right, clean tea towel. Like so, get this out of the way. And we're going to squeeze it again in the tea towel just to get all that last bit. Just go get me a clean tea towel inside. Go, and you just get rid of all the last bit of, ju of juice. Anybody making this rusty, guys? So squeeze it all out. You mightn't see any water coming out, but the tea towel is drying. Is drying all the stuff. Okay, so you want no water in it, guys. Let me know if you're doing this rusty. There we go. And now we're going to put it all back into our dish. Did you get me a clean tea towel? Per uh, perfecto. Now, how simple is that? Shaky, shaky, shaky. Dills out to the wash. Quick wash of the hands and we're back over to the counter. How are we doing guys? Anybody doing this? Let me know. Now, so we are now, this is what's known as a rushti. A potato rushti. So now we have braided our spuds and we have squeezed out I'm gonna turn on my little frying pan now. Penny said, I do stick a menu lotion when squeezing. <laughs> I love it, Penny. <laughs> now, so we've squeezed out all the juice and here's what we do. We season it quite generously, right? Because there's enough there for about six people. Okay, so some rock salt, dill, start with the peppermint. Dill, start cracking in the peppermint. A little bit of mixed herbs. Okay, I use this aromat, I love the flavor of it. A little bit of aromat. And then we are grating in our pepper mill into our frying pan, guys. We're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil, butter for flavor, oil for heat. 
And this definitely works best with a non-stick pan. But if you don't have it, you just need to pay a little bit more attention to it. So you need to loosen it off the bottom if you don't have it. And a little bit of butter. Is that look? Looks good. You're the one doing it, I don't know. Uh, perfect. And now, so we're just going to literally get into there so we can see. Get into there and mix it all up nicely, nicely, all the seasoning in with all the potatoes. Now, as I said, this is a brilliant dish. You'll see this over in Switzerland, Germany, Austria, making a lovely potato rusty. You can do a million and one different variations of it, guys. You can put in sauteed onions in with it. There's absolutely 101 different things you can do with it. Now, give my hands and I'll quick wash in. Sheila Costello said, Happy Easter, Paul. Happy Easter, Sheila. I'll see you when you're back open. Yeah, well, look. The reality of it is, is that we'll be back open whenever we're back open, as soon as we can. It is, it's tough, but anyone who's in business, anybody who's out of a job at the moment, it's the same for all of us guys. So we're not gonna lose too much sleep over it because as hard as it is, we've just gotta drive on through it. We've no choice, can't change, I can't open tomorrow. So I've just gotta drive on through it. Now, so, but I really appreciate that Sheila. That's fantastic to know you're gonna be coming into us. So frying pan oil. And now, just get all your potatoes. Don't panic, guys. Don't panic about anything, all right? So just throw it all in. Dills, grab us the little spatula over there, please. Okay. Here, look behind you. And bang in all our grated potato. Nice and simple. Quick wipey wipey. And here you get, throw that over to the sink, Dills. So here's what we do, right? Just shake it all down. And we want to flatten the whole thing. Get that one out of the way for a sec so you can see. And you gotta press it down fairly nice. You hold on to the pan so we don't go everywhere in that. Trying to get into the pan there so people can see. Squeeze it all the way down, right? Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it all the way down. Because we want to make it nice and tight. Otherwise we're in trouble with the flip that's come up. And we might be in trouble with the flip anyway. And you're gonna leave it like this. So squeeze it, get it all nice and flat. You, you want to get it as compact as we possibly can so that the flip has some chance of making it because if it's not compact well then it's just going to break as we try and flip it and if it does break and this might break if it does break we just put it back in and fix it all back together again see the way i've covered my ass there deals in case it does break <laughs> see <laughs> so we can forget about that for a second keep it make sure pack it all the way down guys get a nice and compact all the way down. Now, like so, we'll see how that gets on now in a sec. Okay, cleany, 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 where's my little blue thing? Let's clean up as we go along, guys. Everything nice and tidy. And we don't have it on too high of a heat. Pretty much medium is good. Any comments, Stills? Um, Darren said, hello, happy Easter from Shannon Harbour. Hey, Darren, how are you? And Anne said, Sorry, catching up after seasoning oil pan. After seasoning, yeah, oil and butter in the pan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit of oil uh, after seasoning oil pan. Yeah, and uh, Anne Marie, sorry. Oil and butter. And put in all the potatoes and just leave it there for a second, okay? Now, we can start getting cracking. Make sure your ovens are turned on, guys. It should be at 180 degrees. And we are going to give that a quick wipe, does. We're going to prep the fry. So this is about making the perfect fry is about timing everything together, okay? So let's go. Did you wipe that, did you? Uh, let's go, cut your tomatoes in half. And the way I do this is so that you take out all the hassle and stress out of everything. Because when we put everything into the oven, we can kind of switch off for a few minutes. See, well, in fairness, Jones, you're famous for it. That's for destroying the place. Uh, you can kind of switch off, clean up, get everything ready so that when you do sit down to eat, all you've got to worry about is the tape, the plates and stuff that are on the table. A little bit of olive oil onto your, you say tomato, I say tomato. A little bit of rock salt. Kerry said delivery, please. Delivery, yeah, yeah. Where's our pepper mill, Dills? Over there, while Dills is getting that. A little bit of our mixed herbs. You can put anything you want on top of that. A little bit of smoked paprika, a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of anything you want, guys. It's just a matter of getting the whole thing prepped. Pepper mill. And perfect. That's our tomatoes ready. Look at our 
Rushdie, okay? So get into there, Shani. Keep it all nice and packed, nice and tight. And what you're looking for here now, right? And this is the simple things to be looking at. I'm gonna shake it just a little bit, right? So you see the way it's moving in the pan. Get right into it, Chair Shani, right over on top of it, right? Come up high and, and look right into it. So it's moving in the pan, but it's still moving a little bit on the outside, which means the crust hasn't perfectly formed. So give it another minute. You want it to go nice and brown underneath. Keep it all nice and packed. And that's what's gonna help us with the flip. Okay. So I said, if, it, if you flip it too soon, it's not crispy, it's gonna break. This might break, but hopefully not. Okay, so there we go. Sean's getting tired. Look, he's been filling, he's been very hard. He's 14, it's very hard to fill him. Come over here, swap, swap it tilt. Yeah. Uh, Sean's like his mother, won't, won't get going at all. Uh, into the, onto the camera, won't come into it. How are we looking there? Love the singing. Well, it's all about having a laugh parade, isn't it? That's all we ever do is sing, sing, sing away. So you can prepare everything now while we're waiting on that rusty. Okay, so just get your sausages and just cut them loose. Okay, you could really be doing this still. Let's go over here and you do this actually. Okay, so just cut them down. I'm doing two types of sausages, guys, because the guys love their denny sausages and I love the slightly bigger ones. Now, my pudding, I'm gonna peel up the whole thing. Uh, which do you prefer, lads, black or white pudding? I love the white, actually I love both of them to be honest. Dills? What? Which what? Is, what? What? Stick with the program, Dills. Shawnee, you're not a mad pudding fan, are you? Uh, I don't mind the white pudding. You don't mind the white. We always tell, every time we, when I was working in hotels, uh, Ben, when the Americans said, oh my God, what's in black pudding? We're, we always tell them, you're better off not knowing, lads, otherwise you wouldn't eat it. So, we're just prepping everything, and now I'm going to, you slice the pudding about an inch thick, give or take. And this is Ross Carberry black and white pudding down there in Cork. We know Avril and the family very well. I saw it in the supermarket the other day and I went, you know what? Perfect. So I can tell, listen to the pan. It's a bit of a. Ooh, it's the dance. No? Not even on Easter Sunday. The day our Lord rose and came again, and you're telling me you're not going to do the sizzle dance? So we have our sausages ready, and every time I get bloody nervous doing this. So now look at the pan there, guys, right? It's shaking, and it's a little bit more compact. This could go horribly wrong if it does. We're not having hash brown steels out of the way. And Shawnee, I only do this once. So if it's you and you're worried about doing this, slide it onto a plate, and then turn the plate the other way over. If you're brave, this could go horribly wrong. I'm a bloody pro. Nothing's gonna go hard me wrong. Get into that pan there, Shawnee. Now, look at that. For our beautiful, you call it hash brown, potato rushy, whatever you wanna call it. At this stage, guys, throw it into your oven, okay? So I'm just gonna pop that into the oven, make sure it's an oven proof pan, and we're gonna throw it straight in, like so. You see that, Shawnee? Yeah, mm -hmm. in we go. How long will that take? It takes as long as we're ready to go. It'll take maybe 25, 30 minutes or so. Now, here's where the fun begins. Yes. That could have gone horribly wrong. That could have gone horribly wrong. Anybody like that flip, lads? Now, a little bit of oil into our pan. How long time did it? Is that 25 past eight? Rob said uh, champion flipper. I tell you what now, Rob, I can be honest with you. Every time I do it, you're just afraid that it's gonna flick out. Let me know how you get on with that. Throw in, let the pan get hot for a sec. We have our sausages ready. We have our pudding ready to go in. Let's come over here and actually prep these sausages. And this is, I tell you, do you know why everybody makes a mess of the turkey and ham at Christmas? It's very, very simple. Because they only ever cook it once in the year. And it's the same with the fry at Christmas time. You, know, you always have like maybe more family around you, maybe six or eight people, and you go, Oh my god, how in the name of God do I cook for six or eight people? So practice, practice. And instead of like a lamb today, we should be having a turkey and ham, or do it some other night throughout the year. Practice, practice, practice. That's how you get good at stuff. Take your time, Bill's no one's watching. Uh, anybody, Shawnee, any comments? This thing is gone clear on comments again. Oh, there we are, we're back. You get a few tips here for breakfast. Uh, yeah, that was a cool flip. Thanks, Francis. Yes, yes. Grab a beer, Paul. I wish, I wish. Uh, a bit too early for a beer. Now, so sausages in the big thick ones first, right? 
And all we're basically looking to do here is to seal everything. Dill's bin for my sausage pack. Is to seal everything off. And then we're just going to finish it in the oven. And that way, panic over, we've cleaned down everything, and we can all sit down and enjoy the fried pan. So just a little bit of a, of a thing. I'll grab a small uh, frying pan there, Dills. We'll get a few things on the go at the same time. So we have our rushy, our hash brown in the oven, crisping up nicely. We have our big sausages on to seal here. We're gonna put in our smaller sausages here. You guys might only have one packet of sausages or one type of sausage, so that's cool. But I said, we like different types of sausages here in this household. And now kids, Here's where I want you guys getting stuck in. Shane, let me know if your mum's keeping up and how's she doing? Dale's come over here for a sec. Get us a, get us a bowl over there. I have a crick in my neck last, the last four or five days. Here, come on over here. Uh, and my tongs. So, excellent. Dale's your job, okay? Kids, you do this. Your mushrooms, I want you to quarter them. So cut them in half, do it on the board if you're, not, if you're a bit too young and you're not strong enough with the knife and then cut them in half again, and we get four quarters. Okay, you get that, Dills? See this, guys? Anytime there's a little bit of muck or soil on it, just peel it off or pull it off, it's fine. Stand this side, buddy, and you're gonna quarter all those mushrooms for me. <laughs> Lovely juggly. How are we all doing, guys? How are we all keeping up? Johnny, you're in charge of comments. Ooh, ooh. Oh, lad, Dills, huh? You're getting the house, Dills. You're getting the house, I'm telling you. Now, so I'm gonna have my overdraft. Okay, so we've got our little bits of sausages there. If you have a big pan, throw in your one of the puddings now so we get it all on the go as quickly as possible. Don't go near your rashers yet. Trust me, everyone makes a mess of rashers. I'm gonna give you the two most important tips in rashers in a few minutes when we get to that point. There we go, how are we doing on this one there? And all you're looking for, so you see guys, all we're looking for is the slightest bit of a seal Baby, kiss by the rose. That's sealed, does No, you don't get it? The last time we dad stop going on with the dad jokes. That's what makes us dad. Now, so all you're looking for is a little bit of a seal on the outside of the sausages. Okay, these guys are going to be pretty much done. Bang them onto your tray there. Simple. Turn down your heat. We're going to do the white pudding in this pan. As I said, don't worry if you're not doing this today, guys. Hopefully, this will give you a bit of an inspiration to do it maybe next Sunday. Because I have a funny feeling we're all going to still be at home next Sunday. Deborah okay. says, uh, when you put the ro uh, rusty in the oven, um, did you use the pan or, or what? We yeah, yeah, use the pan. So now make sure your pan is ovenproof. If you don't have an ovenproof pan, you have to swap it over onto maybe a tray or something like that. Uh, but yeah, my pan is ovenproof, so I'm just... Putting it straight in, flick it over because there'll be somebody giving out. What was, what was that comment earlier on, lads, with the uh, with the scones? I'm still trying to figure it out. What the hell we were going? Anyway, flick over your pudding. Look, I've just got a little bit of a seal. That is fantastic. And the pudding, because we're finishing it all off in the oven. So yeah, like I said, this is a great way. You mightn't do the fry today, but you could turn around on Wednesday. You've got the family around, or whatever. You go, yeah, get rid of that stuff. And wash your hands. And go. Actually, yeah, that's a brilliant idea. I'm going to do this on Wednesday. I'm going to do it next Sunday. So that's perfect. Lovely, lovely sealed. In a second, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna push that over here for one sec. Think about a presentation afterwards. All straight onto that. And I'm gonna turn that off now for one second. So, we are doing two. Uh, Dills, you are in charge of, let me see how we're looking with that. Yeah, flick them over, Dills. See the way? Yeah. Trying to get one little shot of Dills flicking them over. So. Now, here we go with our sausages. Get them all sorted, like so. Dills, you're slowing up the whole machine, Dills. We can get rid of our... Go on to Dills! What a man! What a man! Remember his name, it's Dills. Okay, so we have it sealed on one side. So that's pretty much all we need, right? So now we're gonna turn it all here. One black, one, one white, one. Anybody know that song? I won't go any further. 
<laughs> Look at this. It's all about presentation, guys. It's very, very simple. It's tiny little things that make such a difference. Now, for Greta, I say this all the time, guys. Look, clean your pan now. I'm not gonna use this one again. So clean your pan now while it's hot. All it needs is a little glass of water. Clean, clean, clean as you go along. Don't need any chemicals, no washing up liquid. That's one pan clean. I always say, guys, turn that bit of heat off there now. Uh, don't waste money on silly gadgets. Get good quality ingredients, good quality pots and pans, and good quality knives. You don't need a pancake keeper warmer thing. You don't need that crap. You don't need a garlic crusher. You don't need any of that kind of nonsense. Okay, so spend your money on good quality, we can draw them up top actually, on good quality, like I said, pots, pans, ingredients, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, now, first step, bang this into the oven. So at this stage, you should have your rushti on the go. You should have your tomatoes, your pudding. They're not cooked, so kids, don't try and take a bite out of it. You need to finish them off in the oven, but that takes all the hassle up. Shawnee, follow me over. Sean's fast asleep today. Okay, now we throw our basque into here. Now. Oh, I'm boy, seal sausages. Well, the reason why we're sealing them is like, it's like if you're sealing a steak and putting it into the oven. So it keeps all the juice inside, because otherwise if you put it straight in without sealing them, it kind of just, by the time they get crispy on the outside, a lot of good quality sausages, a lot of the juice would have come out. So just seal them and that keeps everything in. Uh, Olivia said, did you fry the mushrooms yet? You know, here we go. You're one step ahead of me. Who was that, Olivia, was it? Yeah, and our tomatoes just going straight into the oven. Tomatoes straight into the oven with a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of olive oil, uh, salt, pepper, and mixed herbs. Okay, so we are now going to dill. What are we going to use? We're going to use half an onion. That's a pretty big onion. So now we're going to get our mushrooms and onions ready. Dills, you're on cleany uppy stuff. Okay, so get rid of all that there, and I'm going to work with this little half of an onion. If you want more onions, obviously use a full onion. Did you drop that, Dills? Now, here we go. Our onions, slicey, slicey, slicey. Okay, take your time until you get used to it. Like that, take your time, take your time. Then you can get, go faster, turn on the side. Boom, 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 lovely. Straight in. And no, I didn't wipe that pan, or clean that pan, because it's got a lovely bit of flavor from the pudding and from the sausages that we sealed up. How's everybody doing? Are we all up to speed, guys? Okay, we need a good dollop of butter. Show me, show the guys the scones we made there. They are on the video on the page, maybe one or two posts down. A little knob of butter for extra beautiful flavor. Jeez, those onions are strong, only did one. And um, perfect though. How are we all doing guys? Are we all keeping up? John said difficult to see what's happening with the comment, with the comments box. Uh, I think you, if you, I think you can do something on that to get rid of comments. If you're on the iPad, I think you can get rid of the comments somehow. I'm not too sure how. Swipe. Swipe. Shawnee says swipe. Swipe right. Swipe right. Shawnee's our technical guru. So I have two or three cloves of garlic, and we're going to be going on to our rashers now as well in a minute. Okay. So two, or three cloves of garlic. Dicey, dicey, choppy, choppy. You see these guys taking out garlic crushers. If you can't follow that with the knife. I'm telling you, I've just saved your fiber buying a garlic crusher. In we go. Oil or butter with mushrooms? Both. Tell them why, Dills. Because oil for heat and butter for flavor. Absolutely. Oil for heat, butter for flavor. Bang in our mushrooms. This is the easiest thing in the world to do. Get rid of our bowl there, Dills. Where's all my seasoning? Oh, yeah. Okay, so a little bit of mixed herbs, oregano, rosemary. Italian seasoning, doesn't matter what it's called. Dills, 22 twists of the black pepper. And now, a little pinch of salt. Well, you watch what you're doing instead of looking at the comment box. Now, very, very simple, guys. The next thing we're gonna do, get our beans on the go. And the biggest mistake people make in beans, are the, it's like a stew, and it's very important as well. When you're reheating something, start it very low and let it come up to temperature. Don't put it on six, because you're just gonna burn the arse off the, pot, off the pot, and you're gonna make an absolute mess of it. So just bring it up nice and slow. You've got our lovely Heinz beans. And we're gonna bang in them all. So we're gonna put that on at one. Bring it up nice and slowly. Don't need to worry about anything 
burning. We're gonna put that on our little low heat over here. So you see how it's all about timing. Ours goes up to six, so I'm just putting it on one. And when we're getting closer to serve, then I'll bang it up to maybe two or three just to make sure it's nice and heated through. Over to the bin, clean down, quick wipe of everything, quick wipe of everything. Yeah. One clean, one clean. Clean, what else do we need? Yeah. Marcia said boys will need a holiday after all. I think we all will, but we have said, and we're definitely doing it this year. I don't care where we go in Ireland, but we are staying in Ireland because the entire country needs us, lads. So a little, little flick of this. So you're making your sauteed mushrooms and onions. If you want, you can throw in a little bit of white wine as well, just to give it a nice little bit of flavor, but we leave it like that. I told you these guys, this was sent down to us uh, during the week um, from Urn Larder. We've got, what have we got? Irish bacon ketchup, Irish bacon jam, and Irish stout and onion chutney. They were sent down to us from Declan, just to say thanks for all the stuff we're doing. We really appreciate it, Declan. We're gonna have that with our fry today now. I'm looking forward to it. Said, how long have you cooked the sausages, etc., in the oven, and what temperature? This is the beauty of it. Everything is in the in the oven at the exact same time. So, and at the exact same temperature. Sorry, not the exact same time. Our rush was in about maybe, say, seven or eight or ten minutes beforehand. And everything else cooks at the exact same time. Okay, so it's going to be about maybe 15 minutes. I know you're going to think I'm taking the piss, but I'm not. Until it's cooked is the answer. Because your oven is different to my oven. Temperatures might be different. You might have a fan in your oven. I might and whatever. So until it's cooked, but within 20, 25 minutes, it's definitely all done. What temperature? 180 degrees. Dills, you should have been able to answer that. Huh? Oh, well, look who's watching. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> she wants yeah. to know what time it'll be ready. Uh, mother, if you're home in, I'd say 25 minutes, it will be perfect. So now, a little bit, actually, you know what? I'm actually going to throw a bit of white wine into that because it makes them nicer and tastier. So, a little sprinkle. If you want, just throw in a little bit of water, a little bit of a sprinkle. Ooh, it's the. At least say it. Say it. We have just made massive step. <laughs> I got him to say it, lads. I got him to say it. Turn on your grill, everybody. Turn on your grill. Okay, so we're going to get our rashers on the go. Look at that. Say hi to Grandad. Hi Grandad, Grandad's watching over. Grandad, we promise when this is all over, we will come over and cook you a beautiful fry. In fairness, Granny cooks a fantastic fry. And Grandad cooks a pretty mean fry too as well, doesn't he? My father always told me, now, this, look this is just me being me, you guys, you know all ye health freaks, triathletes and all that kind of stuff who aren't into this kind of stuff. I'm just throwing in just another little knob of butter because next week I'm, we're going on a diet tales, aren't you? Yeah. So we're gonna worry about that next week. Okay, so that's just the flavor, the flavor, the flavor. If you wonder why food in restaurants always tastes better than yours, it's butter. It's either butter or cream. It's one or the other. Dale's try that over onto the plate, or onto the table over there. Thanks for being Declan, we're really looking forward to them. Now, what are we doing? That's simmering away nicely. Here are the rules of rashers. And these are very important. Trying to get up off your arse at the moment. This is very, very important. A. For a fry, only ever grill a rasher, okay? Don't ever bake it, don't ever fry it, only ever grill the rasher because you get nice crispiness on the fat. Rule number one. Rule number two, and the most important rule of all rashers. Never ever turn a rasher. It's so thin, you don't need to turn it in the grill at all. It's going to cook just on one side. You turn it, you're going to dry it out. Grill them and never turn them. You have now learned the golden rules. Where's the knife? Sorry, shall you stay here? You're walking a little bit. Just turn your phone. Uh, never ever turn a rasher. I have given you the biggest secret in how to cook perfect rashers. So you do the orders to everybody, guys, at the start. You say, how many sausages do you want? How many rashers do you want? And hang them under. And then that's how many you throw on, okay? So you're not left with a load of stuff at the end of the, sitting on the tray. However, if you are, 
There's nothing nicer than a chopped up sausage and a chopped up rasher with a little bit of pizza pasta that we've already cooked, a little bit of our pizza sauce. Look at that, absolutely mm. beautiful. Clodagh says, what if our grill is broken? What if your grill is broken? Well, then you're just gonna have to start. Is your grill broken? Like, who said that? Clodagh, is it? Clodagh, if your grill is broken, I hereby give you the right to bake your rasher. But if your grill isn't broken, we're watching. Please make sure to grill the rashers. Trust me, you will see the world of a difference. Zeus Hendy says, get a new one. Get a new one. <laughs> there you go, yeah, get a new one. <laughs> Jimmy says, I want all the rashers. Who said that? Jimmy. Jimmy? I thought Jimmy was in bed, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit, I'm not a mad sausage fan. I like good quality sausages, but I do love, I do love the rashers. Like I said, guys, clean, clean, clean. Let's throw those rashers back into the fridge, the ones that are left. And now you are going to see. So mother, if mother is still watching, when we put on the eggs, you can start your journey on the way back. Look at that, beautiful, absolutely. So hopefully guys, you're pretty much in the same, do I need that? I don't need that, get rid of that. You're pretty much in the same time frame as we are. Now, here's what we're gonna give your beans a little stir. Okay, that's only nice and light, so they're not even warm yet, but that's perfect. I'm gonna close up my rashers. And I'm gonna take out my lovely jubbly. See the way everything is, the tomatoes are cooking nicely. Put your board down. Yeah. Look at this, absolutely beautiful. I guarantee you guys, these will be probably the nicest mushrooms and onions you've ever had. Are you getting a good look at that, Shani? Mm -hmm. There we go. And now, be careful kids, that tray is hot. We can put that back into the oven until our rashers are cooked. So we've only pretty much got our eggs to go. So let's throw that back in and let's have a little look at our rush, you guys. Look at that, beautiful. Touch it, don't be afraid to touch it. I can tell that's nice and crispy and it's almost cooked, which is perfect. Haley said, you could have said wine last night and I wouldn't have drank it off. <laughs> Sorry, next time, next time, keep some. Give your pan a quick wipe when it's hot. Now, how simple is this, guys? And now you see why I'm saying to cook the fry like this, because you're cleaning as you go along, because there's, there's nothing to clean. You're cleaning as you go along. Turn that off for one sec. You're cleaning as you go along, so that means you don't have a pile of stuff to wash up, because there's nothing worse than washing up. And all you're gonna have to do is have that one tray, and that's gonna be really quick to clean up as well, because we've put tin foil under the bottom of it. So now, mother, hop into the car. Now we start on our eggs. And I'm gonna show you how to cook the perfect fried egg. So, a little bit of oil. Dale's go over there and get me the large eggs, one packet of the large eggs. Now, a little bit of butter. Uh, don't be giving out to me now. We start on Monday. We've been good on Monday, though, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, from Monday onwards. Now, let that melt. Nice and soft. so everything is now nice and soft, right? nice and gentle, nice and slow. There's no panic, there's no worry. That's about cooking. Okay, so we're never panicking at all or anything. How are our rashers looking, Shani? Not bad, not bad. I should have got the thick cut rashers now, I'm not, but they will do. So you see, simple. That's why you don't turn them, you dry them out otherwise. Our beans are going to stir. And we're gonna try one thing later on, now, and this, this could go horribly wrong as well, but we shall see. Throw that over here because we don't need that anymore. Now, cracking your eggs. There's four of us. I always have two. Shawnee normally has two. They're not large. Who saw was that shite? They're not large, lads. That's the way the world is going. Yeah. Anyway, they say they're large eggs. So in with our eggs. Nice and low heat. Two. Deal as many eggs as you want. Mother, how many eggs do you want? You have one. Mum only normally has one egg as well. Now I'm gonna let you into a little secret what I love to do with my fried eggs. I love to crumble a little bit of blue cheese on top. Don't throw your eyes to heaven till they're fantastic. A little bit of blue cheese and then just finish it back under the grill. It's absolutely delicious. Throw this over here. I don't care what anyone says. They always say throw your eggshells into compost. Eggshells don't break down. You can go back in 50 years time and the eggshells are still there. Don't care. 
Little bit of salt, season, 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 Dills, isn't that right? Martina said, do you not turn the sausages in the grill? No, you don't, the sausages are in the oven, so you don't need to turn the sausages because we seal them. We love it. Yeah. You seal them, and then that, so that way they're nice and brown all around, and then you're just finishing them off in the oven. So that's why you don't need to worry. So that's why we seal them in the pan as well, we get the colour all around. Jimmy says, where did Dills get his cool haircut done? <laughs> We think we all know the answer to that. Shawnee, get into the pan. You're showing nobody nothing. You're actually useless cameraman today now. I'm telling you, your bed tonight at 10 o'clock. Nobody can see a damn thing while you're yawning over there. Now, so our little pan in there. Look, simmering nicely, nicely, nicely. Everything's nice and calm. Okay? Dills, how are we doing, buddy? We don't need that. I tell you, lads. Enda, come back to Enda. That's all I have to say. Come back to Enda. Somebody who knew what he was doing. Look in the camera, Sean, and what you see is what the people can see at home. Oh, they so can see can, perfectly. So if you can see like that shite here, that means that's what they can see. Okay, so show them what's going on on the planet. Now, that, does that make sense, Dils? <laughs> Lovely pan there now, sizzling away nicely. Everything in the oven is almost ready. Perfectly. Let's check check our our sauce, our rashers. Give our beans. Turn your beans up a little bit now, okay? Because the, they're not going to burn now. Enda but, said on the way. Thanks, Enda. Now. Look at that. We're nearly there on our rashers. And, uh, we can throw in more rashers afterwards if you want, but that's loads for us. 30 more seconds for that. About 30 more seconds for that. We're gonna finish up. It all depends on how you like your eggs. That's literally 30 seconds under the grill is a brilliant way just to finish them off as well. Who's watching? Who made the rushti? I wanna know who made the rushti. Who said that? Kate. Kate? We both know now you're talking poo poo. Okay, he was fast asleep there now. I don't know. I think he was showing you his foot at one stage. <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon, Bills? What a great Easter breakfast. Thanks, Sharon. We were supposed to be in Ireland on April 24th, hoping for August. Well, Sharon, hopefully we'll still have the fry when you're ready. I like a fried Christmas pudding in the pan. Oh yeah, that sounds nice, Owen. I like the sound of that. From Michigan. Sharon's in Michigan. Well, hopefully we'll see you in August, Sharon. Fingers crossed. We're not a million miles off serving. I'm gonna show you. Mother should be in the car by now. If not, just go and get me one of the placemat things. If not, mother, your eggs will be cold. So, we're nearly ready to serve. How long did it take us? About nearly 45 minutes, and that's with me talking nonsense halfway through it. Now, Let's come and look at our rashers. Perfect. So I'm gonna close that for one sec while I get this up. Uh, what do I not need? I don't need my oven. So I turn off my oven. I'm gonna pull out all my stuff. See the way everything is cooked to absolute perfection. I'm going to open up my rashers. I'm gonna take all them off. Don't ever turn a rasher. No matter who tells you, they're lying. They dry out. This is the perfect way to cook them. Look at this. Two nice little crispy ones there. And another crispy one here. Mary said, I'm stuck after the skull is cooked. I'm going to wait an hour to make the brunch. Perfect. That's exactly what we call it, brunch. Look, so you're bringing this down to the table and everybody helps themselves. Eggs off. 30 seconds under the grill. Like so. Close grill. Take out Rushdi. Or you can call him Salmon if you want. Kids won't get that. Millennials won't get that. Salmon Rushdi. Okay, here we go. Follow me now. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Okay, one Rushdi. Woo ha! Wash your pan. Wash your pan as you go along, guys. Saves all the hassle. Look, quick lick like that. You don't have 101 pots and pans cleaning up. Done. Perfectly clean. You see them all now on the telly saying, well I strongly recommend, you know, once you like cook a little bit of this, get your frying pan and clean it now, wash save yourself the wash oh, They're all just, they're just watching us still, aren't they? Copy us. Now, so your beans should be, look at that, the steam is coming out of the beans. Dean, you will be delighted with those beans, they're perfect. Now, eggs, oh my god. Oh my god, I've never seen an egg like it. Look at this. How simple, that's it's like the scones. I'm giving you all ample warning. This could go horribly wrong, okay? But we're gonna try it anyway. So, there's a method 
Why are you laughing? No, I'm not flipping these, don't worry. There's a method to my madness in everything, isn't there, Des? Any more comments? Because we're about to have our frying out of it. Linda McCarthy said, just joining from Ohio. No, you didn't miss anything, Linda. No, we're, 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 like, we're just about to wrap it up. You didn't miss much. No, <laughs> Linda, it's fantastic to have you from Ohio. Now, here's what we go. Here's what we do. So you got to go like nice and fast, otherwise you're going to make a mess of this. So bring it up to the thing, to the edge, and then you go, oh, 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 oh. I don't make messes. I don't make messes. Look at that. A rusty with our eggs. Like, huh? Oh, Mr. Bloody Professional. No, you're dead right. I did. I, I got a bit excited. I did get a little bit excited, and I missed the mark a little bit. There's always one. You're dead right, Dilsa. I reared you well. Give your frying pan a clean from your eggs. Everything is roasting hot, lads, so you don't need to worry about it going cold. Look at that. Quick blast, quick blast. Now, you can relax, knowing that the kids do the rest of the washing up. We've got our rushki, we've got our fried eggs. Look at a little bit of pepper and salt on top. You have your tomatoes, your pudding, your different sausages, your sauteed mushrooms and onions, and your rashers. What else would you want on Easter Sunday? A selection of Easter eggs. Afterwards, mm. did you have fun with that, guys? Easter Sunday. I hope you're having a bit of a laugh, lads. It's a bit of crack. We have another three weeks of this shite. At least, if I haven't killed one of these guys by the end of it, it'll be an absolute miracle. Aww. You know it, Sean. I'm gonna go after it. <laughs> <laughs> guys, happy Easter to all of you. We've made the scones earlier on. Now we've made the fry. Now we're gonna sit back, and relax. We're gonna enjoy our leg of lamb tonight as well. But that's how you cook. The perfect fry, make it so simple, no hassle, no washing. All you gotta do is sit back and enjoy it now. Hope you enjoyed it. Any more comments before we switch off? Uh, joining from County Clare. Uh, so it's not a raise on Ohio, but it's great to see you cooking a fry. Looks amazing. Thanks a million, Bernie. If we were filming Trevo's kitchen, he'd be sliding those eggs off again. <laughs> I'd have to cook another rush to you, I reckon. Uh, shout out, Paul. Hi, Yvonne. Big shout out to you, so. Brilliant, enjoy your breakfast, we sure will, Margaret. Uh, that would feed an army. That's pretty much what we have here, lads. We've like two grown men my, and, and another growing man too. Bon appetit, thanks, Ernie. Uh, well done, lovey, you're very welcome, Valerie. Another epic Trebo presentation. Guys, we just hope you're having a laugh. That, like, that's, that's the main thing. We just hope that somewhere in some house, somewhere around the world, we're just making this a little bit more bearable and you're having a bit of crack and you're really enjoying the laugh. That's all we're trying to do. The food means bugger all. We don't care if you're cooking it or not. We just hope you're having a bit of a laugh, keeping your mind off things. Happy Easter, Deirdre. Thank you very much. Uh, Kira, Irwin. Hi, Kira. How are you doing? Uh, thanks, Emil, for the tips. Just simple stuff, guys. Happy Easter, folks, from Fran. Hi, Fran. Uh, Hodgins. Uh, gonna tuck in. Thank you. Hope you made the fry, guys. Brilliant. Thank you. Isn't it much better than watching Irby and Orby and all that kind of crap, lads? In an empty church, showed you how to make a perfect fry and put on Ben Hurd or TE or something like that. Ten Commandments. Happy Easter, Neve. Thank you. Happy Easter from Yvonne. Stuart Kelly. Great job. Thank you very much. Guys, our fry is going cold. We'll read all the comments as we always do. Thanks a million for everything. But for now, Dales. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Happy Easter, guys. <laughs>